an introduction to Kenneth Gentry's book Before Jerusalem Fell. Narrator David Clark. All three Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke, contain the Olivet Discourse which Jesus gave and was a prophecy and a warning about the destruction of Jerusalem and the day of vengeance that actually took place as Jesus predicted in 70 AD. John's Gospel was the last to be written and his book of Revelation was a prophetic commentary on the Olivet Discourse spoken by Jesus but written beforehand. And so John had no need to record the Olivet Discourse in his Gospel. This is evidenced by its contents. The book of Revelation was written whilst the temple was still standing. The reason why the dating of the New Testament books are important is that it is impossible to understand the book of Revelation if one believes it was written by John around 95 AD. Historians can be wrong and tradition unreliable as has been established by most Christians. It is my belief the order of the dates of publication of the New Testament Gospel books Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John are important with that of John's book of the Revelation being published before 70 AD which was before the destruction of Jerusalem and its temple and known and read by the seven churches of Asia Minor and all the apostles. Before Jerusalem fell Dating the Book of Revelation An exegetical and historical argument for the pre-70 composition by Kenneth L. Gentry Jr. THD Published 1989 Publisher's Preface by Gary North I have several reasons for wanting to see this book in print. The first reason is my technical interest in the methods of dating primary source documents on the basis of their internal evidence and external evidence from other sources. The accurate dating of historical documents is crucial to their knowledge of the events of any period of history. If we do not date our primary source documents accurately, we cannot expect to gain an accurate understanding of history. There have been too many ill-fated attempts to compare contemporary events in different ancient societies based upon on inaccurate chronologies. The pieces of the chronological jigsaw puzzle do not match and therefore must be damaged by the historian in order to jam them together. My theory of chronology is simple. If we don't know when something happened, we don't know how and why it happened. The Bible is self-consistently an historical book. More than any other foundational religious text in man's history, it claims to be an historical book. Thus, Christians need to treat it as a historical document it claims to be. Modern scholarship, even Christian scholarship, has too often refused to do this, especially with regard to the Old Testament. For example, Scholars prefer to accept, as a chronological standard, the various attempts, modern reconstructions of the historical text of the non-historically minded Egyptians. They then rewrite the events of scripture, especially the events of the Exodus, in terms of modern interpretations of pagan Egyptian texts. Footnote 1. Gary North. Moses and the Patriarchs. Published by Dominion Religion. My second reason for publishing this book is that as a Bible student, I want to know when a Bible book or epistle was written so that I can better understand the ethical message of the document. If we do not understand the historical context within text, we will have trouble understanding the text itself. If we fail to understand both text and context, we risk misapplying the text message in our lives. In the case of no other book of the New Testament has an error in dating led to more misinterpretations 
and misapplications than the book of Revelation. Third, there is no doubt that the intellectual attack on the integrity of the Bible's manuscripts has been the most important single strategy of covenant-breaking modern Bible scholars. Footnote 2 writes an Old Testament theologian, Walter Kaiser, for many it is too much to assume that there is a consistency within one book or even a series of books alleged to have been written by the same author. For many contend that various forms of literary criticism have suggested composite documents, often traditionally posing under one single author. This argument, more than any other argument in the least in the last 200 years, has been responsible for cutting the main vein of the case for the unity and authority of the Bible message, quote Walter Kaiser in Towards Old Testament Ethics, published by Grand Rapids, Michigan, Zondervan Academia, 1983. I refer here to the academic speciality known as higher criticism of the Bible. Footnote 3 and 4. Footnote 3. Oswald T. Elias, The Five Books of Moses, Second Publication. Footnote 4. Very few Arminians, free will Christians, discuss this topic of biblical prophecy in terms of God's absolute sovereignty. A large part of this attack involves the dating of the Bible's original texts. The presupposition of all higher critics of the Bible is that the Bible texts, especially the prophetic texts, could not possibly be have written at the time that the texts insist they were written. To admit that they were written when the text says that they were written would be to admit that mortals, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, can accurately predict the future. This would destroy the most cherished assumption of the humanists, the sovereignty of man, of his ability to forecast the future actually exists. The future is not only known to the revealer, it is foretold by something beyond man's power to alter. This points clearly to the absolute sovereignty of God and the humanist rejects this doctrine with all his heart. Click the link below to a free PDF and access to this text. Free access to a PDF copy of this book before Jerusalem fell, accessed by the link provided at the bottom of this video.